Bespoke Radio for the Masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. All right. Good evening, Fade to Black. How you doing, everybody? It is going to be one of those nights. Today is Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Billy Carson is here. That's right. And and tonight, it, it, it's kind of funny um, that uh, Billy and I do a lot of uh, stuff together all year long and are always doing shows and things, um, TV, film, whatever. And But when Billy calls me up and he goes, okay, man, I'm ready. I want to drop some knowledge. I'm like, let's go. Let's go. And, and that's what tonight is. And that's why I called the show 4BK Knowledge Drops. Uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, Billy is with us. I want to remind everybody, tomorrow night, Bob Fritzel is here. We're going to talk about the ancient builder race. Thursday night, John Malor is here. We're going to be talking about ETs in ancient literature. And also, uh, are you ready? Christian ufologist. Yeah, there there is such a thing. We're going to do all of that on Thursday night, uh, but tonight it's uh, Billy Carson. And also, I just want to mention there's some breaking news before the show. This show is live, live. And, you know, a little public service announcement. Uh, there was a huge, huge earthquake uh, within the hour in Taiwan, uh, 11 miles off of the east coast of Taiwan. Uh, yes, uh, it's a big one, 7.6, and tsunami warnings have been issued. Um, so if, uh, if anything breaks, I will let you know during the show tonight. But tonight, Billy Carson is back with us. And uh, before I get into all of that, Billy is the founder and CEO of Forbidden Knowledge, Inc. Uh, he's the best-selling author of the Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. Woke doesn't mean broke. And his latest uh, with Matt LaCroix, that also went to number one, the Epic of Humanity. And also tonight, we're going to be talking about his latest release called Fractal, The Fractal Holographic Universe, The Matrix Code Revealed. We're going to do the deep dive into that. Tonight, we're dropping some knowledge. And there you go. Now, also, we've got a lot of events coming up this year uh, that uh, we are doing. We've got the Forbidden Conscious Awards. Uh, that is coming up. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we're going to Egypt. Billy's going to Turkey. He's going to go Beckley Tepe without me. Yeah, that, that that right there, Billy, when when you least expect it, there's payback that is going to happen there. And uh, now he is the CEO of First Class Space Agency, also based in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And he has got a certificate of science with an emphasis on neuroscience at MIT and a certificate in ancient civilization from Harvard University. I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, the one and only my good friend, Billy Carson. He's right there. Billy, how you doing, All my right. brother? Fantastic. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. So yesterday, I, I, you know, just for transparency with everybody, uh, Billy. Yeah. So Billy calls me. I said, so, man, what's going on? Nothing, man. I'm jumping on a plane. I said, oh, okay, where are you going? Uh, I'm going back to Florida. Where are you? I'm in L.A. What do you yeah. mean you're in L.A.? And you didn't call me? I flew in this morning, Jimmy. I'm flying back now. <laughs> I was like, geez. And, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's, that's how you get stuff done. Right. Yeah. You don't call yeah. you don't call your friends. You don't let anybody know that you're in town because that's going to take away from work. I like yeah. I like the game plan. Uh, it, it's yeah, uh, and it, and you're on the show tonight from Florida. Yep, I'm back, man. It was great. I went out there, took care of business, filming a new documentary by Intelligent Media about uh, anti-gravity and levitation. 
There's a lot of science and a lot of quantum physics and quantum mechanics involved in it. It was pretty challenging, but we got through it and uh, hopped back on a plane, man, and caught the red eye right back to Florida. Then went for a four-mile walk on the beach. <laughs> That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Now, now, Billy, um, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. I'm going to pop this up first. Uh, I just want everybody to uh, to peep this out. This is the cover of Billy's uh, new book, The Fractal Holographic Universe, The Matrix Code Revealed. You can get it on Amazon. You can go over to ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Uh, it's uh, Forbidden Knowledge TV. The links for everything are below and over on our website and but uh the the cover of the book is is very interesting and th we're going to be talking a, a lot about physics and science and things tonight but billy let me ask you this first as we get started what inspired you to go here the fractal holographic universe what what was the inspiration well you know i had pondered the nature of our reality for over a decade. As a matter of fact, one of my very first lectures that I did at Contact in the Desert years ago was the fractal holographic universe. Uh, and during the research into preparing my, my, my presentation for that three and a half hour lecture, I got so deep into the information and I was able to, be, to, to connect more dots and paint even a better picture for myself personally and I was like, wow, the world needs to know about this. And at that moment, I knew back in like 2017 that I was going to eventually write a book about this topic, but broken down in a way that allows people who may not have a background in quantum physics or quantum mechanics, uh, you know, or supersymmetry, theoretical physics, to give them a way to understand it, to break it down in a way where they can really digest it and discern it uh, and get something out of it. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy to announce it's on pre-order now and uh, headed into printing soon, and the books are going to be shipped. All the pre-orders will be autographed. Uh, but yeah, it, it, that's why I got into it. I just, I just really thought that this is a topic that most people maybe have not pondered, but once you begin to ponder it and dig into it, it like, it blows your brain to pieces. <laughs> you know, it shatters reality. And I, I just was like, wow, people should have the opportunity to at least try to digest this information. Yesterday was, and thank you for that. Yesterday was uh, April Fool's Day, so it's full of pranks, and mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite days of the year. You, you, yeah. you know, your your own reality gets tested, right? Yeah. Where you're seeing a headline, and then you've got to go, okay, all right, uh, seems real. Is it real? Is it? <laughs> and, and 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 it also you it forces you to come mm -hmm. back and go. What is reality, right? Mm -hmm. what, what I mean it, it, is is this is what I'm going through now real? The challenges that I'm going through now real? Did I go through these before? It seems like I've been here before. This whole question of what yeah. is reality? What is where my feet are touching the ground right now? Mm -hmm. Is that reality? Yeah. Well, you know, and people ask that question when I talk about that we're living in a fractal holographic matrix. Was that does that mean we're not real? It doesn't mean that we're not real because we are very real and that our energy exists in this dimension and even in higher dimensions. But what I'm doing is I'm explaining something in a way that breaks down the creation or the potential creation of this realm that we're living in, that we're inhabiting. So I, I believe that a lot of these ancient text books, including scriptures like in the biblical text and the Quran and going back to the Sumerian tablets, the, uh, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, and many other ancient texts from around the world were right, that we're living inside of a creation. And what this book attempts to do is utilize real peer-reviewed science to break down the method and the form of the creation that we're living in. And it really does appear now after a lot of scientific studies that we are living in a fractal holographic matrix made of light, that everything that exists in the third dimension is a wavelength of light and energy. So we're talking about an energetic matrix. So we're, we are and we are completely immersed in it, meaning so we can't detect that we're inside of it because we're from the inside trying to see out and we can't. But it doesn't take away the, from the fact that we are real and we have real experiences. It just means it's explaining 
uh, the, the, the creation technique or the software program or whatever you want to call it, this divine uh, energy that's imbued into everything, what method was used to create this? And, and I believe that it was fractals and holography using light. Now, and this is where, um, and I love that, but when you and I are going backwards down the shaft at the Ben Pyramid, mm-hmm. that doesn't feel too holographic to me. That feels pretty <laughs> real. <laughs> well, your experiences here are going to be real uh, based on your perception of reality. You know, so everything is going to be relative to the individual uh, time, distance, gravity, uh, momentum, all of those things are going to be relative to the individual that is experiencing them. Even though we are all part of one mass consciousness, we are having this individual or the illusion of this individual experience, which is really the universe dividing itself into literally Google's of entity so that it can experience itself subjectively through all of us. So when you're going down the bent pyramid, climbing down that shaft, you know, 65 meters, uh, and, and then, you know, you're getting claustrophobic, those feelings and those emotions, they're real. It's just that we're, we are all connected on this energetic grid. Uh, and this, this particular universe that we're in and this particular dimension quite possibly isn't the only one that exists throughout the entire universe. We could be living in an ancestor civilization. Now, the ideas that you're presenting here are starting to become mainstream in science. Mm-hmm. And this yeah. is and, and what, what I find bizarre about that is that when we go uh, to the distant past, uh, go to uh, Copernicus or, or Bruni or Galileo and, and, and anybody that was trying to change our perception of not only the world and the sun and, and, and what is rotating what and what is at the center of what, uh, the, the, wor- the, the earth is round, right? All of these, okay, I've got an echo in the background. Okay, I've got an echo in the background. Oh, geez. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's there. Okay. We had it gone. Okay, hang tight one second. That's bizarre. Okay, yeah, I'm going to mute you. I'm going to. Uh, 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 Billy just left. Um, this happened during sound check, and he fixed it. And so, uh, so anyway, what was I? What was I just saying? Oh, 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 oh! There, Billy's back. Yeah. Um, when you go back to Galileo and Bruni and Copernicus, where they were trying to show everybody an alternate view of what was going on. That went against the mainstream, but mm-hmm. now it's mainstream, yeah. right? And yeah. and that's what we're going through now with science, where the things that we have uh, been trying to uh, get looked at and try to change our worldview about us and, and our reality, science is now going in that direction. And, yeah. and everything in the world of science seems to be uh, tipped upside down right now, which mm-hmm. I would suggest is like, it doesn't feel like reality anymore. Yeah. Well, all, you know, mainstream science is doing something great. It's challenging its concepts, challenging prior theories and theoretical physics and, and standard physics. Uh, and, and this, you know, everything from astrophysics to the creation of the universe and everything else. And and what that does, it forces us to begin to dig deeper, to ask more questions, to not accept the status quo based on a hypothesis that's 60, 70 years old or even sometimes older, but to begin to push, um, you know, push the envelope a little bit. Because at the end of the day, we are still real newborn babies when it comes to understanding the science of the universe and the science of human consciousness. We are just barely scratching the surface. And even with scratching the surface, we've gained so much knowledge. But there's so much more we can do, but we've got to push harder. And I think the scientists now are beginning to debate more, uh, sometimes a little too ferocious, but but they really are, they really are trying to fight for new theories, ideas, concepts, and push the envelope of reality so that we can begin to dig deeper and, and look harder and do better research and come up with new experiments to find out. What is this third density that we're living in? What are higher dimensions? What is our role here in this universe? And how does the ether of space-time actually function and work? 
And can we learn to manipulate it or access it? And so those are a lot of the big questions that are coming up right now. Well, when you have the fundamentals, I mean, the fundamentals, Mm -hmm. right? Big Bang. Now, the Big Bang, Big Bang Theory, and the idea of the start of everything, uh, that's that's a relatively new uh, idea and term, okay? And it was coined in, in the mid-50s, uh, Big Bang. And then it started to take hold in, in the 1960s. Mm-hmm. Now the accepted, uh, well, <laughs> it's changing now, yeah. is 13.8 <laughs> billion years is the age of the universe, and the Big Bang started then. Time moved forward to 13.8 billion years later to where we are now. Mm-hmm. But that that's the foundation, right? That's, mm-hmm. the, that's the accepted, that, it's not a law of physics, but it's right. an accepted theory, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and so this is being debated now whether the Big Bang even happened and that maybe time is forever. And this yeah. is this is getting very, very, very serious, isn't it? Oh, it's getting really serious. Some of the uh, Penrose, uh, this physicist named Penrose, he's theorizing that the Big Bang is the death of one universe and the birth of a new universe, and that we could be in a infinite pool of universes, bubbles that are bumping into each other on this gigantic membrane. It's called M theory, membrane theory. And in this theory, these membranes and these bubbles connect and bump into each other, which creates these bangs. And uh, and the reason why they bump into each other, not, not only are we all moving, but also these universes appear to be all expanding. And we know that our universe is expanding faster than the speed of light. We can never reach the edge of our universe because it's expanding so fast. Even at the speed of light, we'll never reach the edge. That's how fast it's expanding. So the, imagine these bubbles all blowing up at the same time and then bumping into each other and sending their energy or the energy, a lot of the dark energy and dark matter from one universe into another universe, creating a brand new Big Bang and growing a brand new bubble. And so I believe that his hypothesis, as far as I can see from my research, I kind of I'm going with with his hypothesis right now. I believe that we are living in a multiverse of these uh, energetic bubbles that are bumping and crashing into each other. And there could be Googles and Googles and Google is a number. It's not a search engine. Googles have uh, of actual bubbles out there within this multiverse. And what's interesting, some could have the same exact laws of physics as we have here. Uh, some can have, uh, you know, carbon based life forms, even another copy or version of you living in another universe doing something totally different. So in another universe, you and I might be golfing in Alcapulco right now. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's crazy stuff to wrap your mind around, but it's definitely worth uh, taking the energy and time to look into it, to ponder it and to be able to realize that we're part of something so massive and so incredible. It doesn't make me feel smaller. It makes me feel bigger because I feel energetically like I'm connected to all of these realms. Now, okay, so uh, just I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, but it's an interesting thought. So when you consider the idea of the multiverse, and uh, multiple universes out there, these bubbles that are moving around, bubbles, and, and if, if they are expanding like we are expanding, and the outer reaches of, hopefully that won't add the echo. Check, check. Okay, we're good. Um, yeah. So that, the edges of our universe are expanding faster than the speed of light out here, right? Okay. Yeah. It's a little slower on the inside where we are. Mm-hmm. But as you move out, it, 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 the expansion is getting faster and faster and faster. So now it bumps into another universe that is also expanding. The two overlap at faster than the speed of light. Yes. Both of them. So what do you see from one universe to another as you're passing each other, both expanding at faster than the speed of light? I'm Would glad you, you brought even that question up. Yeah, you, yeah. You brought up something that just happened. I thought it was maybe uh, three years ago now. Scientists, astrophysicists are claiming in a paper that they wrote in the Astrophysical Journal that they can see now where another universe has crossed over into our universe. 
Revenants of Another Universe. This is an actual scientific write-up, a peer-reviewed science paper. And so they're saying that the, what you just said, the crossing over of another universe, they believe they may have detected that, which is incredible, which means that they will support the multiverse theory and the multi-universe bubble theory at least, or at least something expanding or maybe membranes in some way expanding and connecting and bumping into each other. So it's uh, and, 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 and incredible. Here's the, now here's the trippy thought. If that expanding universe, I mean, you know, that's intersecting with us, right? Mm -hmm. Like this. I'm trying to do two curves with my, so I can bend my fingers backwards, right? So yeah. like, and if it's expanding faster than the speed of light, do we see it coming? Mm -hmm. Right? Well, do we see the interesting it? thing? You can't, when something is moving faster than the speed of light, it's going backwards in time. So when you have neutrinos and some of these other smaller subatomic particles that have the capability of moving faster than light, they are actually, <laughs> it's so bizarre. They're moving in a particular direction, but they're also experiencing time in reverse. If we were to get into a spaceship right now and we had the capability of beginning to achieve a percentage of the speed of light, time would begin to slow down. If we can achieve the speed of light and go away from the Earth for one year, that'd be 10 years. One year for us would be 10 years on Earth. And we'd come back because that's another return trip. So we're talking about 20 years have gone by on Earth and we've only left and gone away for one year out and one year back at the speed of light. Now, once we exceed the speed of light, which is now, now we know is not impossible, well, all of a sudden, if we can do that, we'd be able to go backwards in time. So it's wild that, uh, that it has this weird effect of slowing down our perception of time and even our biological clocks would slow down depending on your momentum. And I often question uh, that part of it when physicists try to de debate this point. And they are all looking at numbers and they're coming up with different conclusions. They, mm -hmm. they don't agree with each other. Yeah. But Einstein, uh, more or less, it depends on how you want to interpret this, but once you achieve the speed of light, you achieve total mass mm -hmm. and right. time stops, right? Yeah. Okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. So you get to the speed of light and you're cruising, but... Right, right. Well, there's a way to avoid that. <clears throat> and it's something in theoretical, theoretical physics, which has now been tested in the laboratory, it's called a warp drive. That's just one method. There's a couple of methods they're experimenting with. And you know that CERN, the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland, has also been testing the creation of microscopic black holes. So they're focusing on two things. One thing is the warp drive. The other thing is how can they create a controllable and sustainable black hole or a Einstein Rosen bridge that can connect one part of space time to another part of space time and allow a person to fold space and punch a hole straight through and arrive at a very distant destination within a very short period of time. That's one experiment that have been done. But there's another experiment that has actually been successful in a lab. It's called warp drive, kind of like Star Trek. They discovered that it's possible in a laboratory setting to make a small warp bubble. And the theory behind it is the ship is sitting in the space grid, right? It doesn't move, it never, use, it never uses propulsion to move because then you begin to fall into Einstein's laws of theory, theory of relativity. But what it does is it begins to expand um, the, the space, it shrinks space in front of the ship and expands it from the back. So what happens is the ship is like on a tablecloth that's being pulled. So the ship never moves. It's the tablecloth that's moving, and the ship is riding the, the tablecloth, uh, so to speak. And so by that method, you can, exceed, uh, you can exceed multiples of the speed of light without violating the theory of relativity. And so it will allow you to do things like go away at five times the speed of light and then come back, and Earth won't be that much into the future. Right, so right. This, you, this is you, where, you, where we have to go. Right. So velocity is taken off the picture, right? You don't yeah, feel exactly. the, you don't feel acceleration. No. Um, you're basically just stepping onto the ship and stepping off of the ship. It doesn't exactly. even have to be a ship. It could be a phone booth. It could be anything. Correct. As it long could as you be can anything. create a stable warp field. Right. Exactly. 
That's heavy. And doesn't yeah. that, doesn't that, cha- I'm going to get back to the fractal universe, <laughs> but I love this conversation. Um, doesn't this check all of those paradoxes and all of those mm-hmm. issues that um, physicists and, and uh, astrophysicists and, and engineers yeah. and, and people that are in the space industry uh, mm-hmm. that checks all the boxes of, yeah. of problems, right? Yeah. That would solve a lot of issues, including time dilation and, and aging and everything else yeah. that comes into play, right? Absolutely. It'll make, it'll put the universe within our grasp, at least our Milky Way galaxy within our grasp. You know, you need to really travel at incredible speeds, multiples of the speed of light to travel outside of the galaxy and then come all the way back to your starting point. But within our galaxy, if we can cover, you know, for four or five sectors, that would be amazing. I mean, that would be mind blowing. You're talking about being able to visit literally thousands and thousands of stars uh, and potentially all those planets orbiting them. So it would be a huge, uh, a huge, um, you know, advancement for mankind. And that's out off into the future. But I believe we will achieve that for sure. I don't think that it's without that it's not within our reach. It's just a matter of time and, uh, and uh, for us to mature scientifically uh, and be able to achieve that goal, which I think is very doable. Yeah, because when you have the skeptics, right, they all say the same thing. Space is too big, man. You know, yeah. how it, 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 you, you have no idea how long it takes to get across. That's the only thing that they can go to. Right. But if E.T. is more advanced than us, them traveling the universe and exploring things is easy. It's easy. it's not an effort. It's not an effort. You're not no. spending ten thousand years on a ship just sitting no. there, <laughs> right? You're not no. doing that. You no. just it's just like you and I uh, getting up uh, mm-hmm. and and going to breakfast in in Fort Lauderdale and and, exactly. and coming back and it, it's it's that easy to do. It is that easy. What we don't have, the reason why we can't sustain a much larger warp field is because it requires a certain type of exotic energy dealing with antimatter. And at the moment, creating one gram of antimatter costs, I forget how many millions of dollars. So we need a lot more, uh, we need a, a much better economic system so that we can create the, uh, the antimatter and we need a, a better way to create it. And but once we can get an ample amount of that antimatter, then we have enough of what we'll be able to need to create a stable warp field. So, but yeah, it's just a matter of time. Everything, I mean, look where we came. A hundred years ago, we were in a horse buggy and carriage, and now we put remote control cars on uh, on planets, and we've even got Voyager One and Voyager Two heading out in, into interstellar space. In a hundred years, we've done this. So we're on the right track, and that's what all the oppression and suppression. Can you imagine even without that? Uh, so, yeah, I think, you know, in the next couple thousand years, it's like, wow, all the way outside the box, whatever you can think of can happen. Now, uh, you and I have been around the world together, right? Yeah. And we love exploring ancient sites and things. Uh, mm-hmm. This Monday, pretty crazy day, right? Yeah. Pretty crazy day. We've got uh, a total eclipse. Uh, the you know, totality going right across the center of the United States. Mm-hmm. We've got NASA launching three rockets at the same time. Mm-hmm. We have a comet that is called the Devil's Comet, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that yeah. is going to be in the sky at the same time as the eclipse. Yeah. Um, I think Mercury's in retrograde too as well. Let's just throw, throw that in there too as well, right? So all of this is going on at the same time. Billy, if this went down 3,000 years ago in Egypt or Peru, right? Or, you know, just pick a country, mm-hmm. uh, the the world would have lost its mind. Oh, they would have went crazy. The the gods are coming. The demons are coming to, to rapture our souls and... I mean, you name it, it would have been everything you could think of. It's the end of time. The, you know, uh, the planet's going to explode. I mean, people have been contacting me like crazy, asking me if they should go stock up on food and gas and things like that. I think we got an extra maybe three or four thousand emails in the last few days of people asking us these questions. And my answer is simply this. Everything's going to be fine. They're, the world is not going to end. These are some extreme astronomical phenomenon combined with technological phenomenon at the same time. 
However, uh, everything is going to be perfectly fine. We'll all be OK. Uh, there's no catastrophe looming over us at this exact moment. Not to say there's not one coming in the future, but right now, everything will be fine. And uh, and then, of course, I forgot this. There's one more. And CERN is firing up on the same day. That is true. <laughs> they're firing up. <laughs> yes, they're, they're, they're coming back online. And they'll be doing many new experiments. And one of them is what I talked about a little bit earlier in the show, creating stable wormholes. At first, they thought that these microscopic wormholes were going to suck the earth in and, and disintegrate us, but they realized that wasn't going to happen, especially since portals form around the earth every single day. They're called X points. That's what NASA calls them, X points. Organic, naturally forming portals where diffusion points of the magnetic field crisscross, they create these diffusion points called X points, and at those X point locations randomly around the planet earth, Portals open up that leads straight paths to the sun, the moon, and even other planets in our solar system. So it's pretty interesting. I think the ancients may have been able to harness or access these X points in some, uh, you know, in the distant past, and we're now just discovering what was already there. Okay, now random question: Why April eighth? Right. It seems like the date was circled by a lot of different groups for yeah. different reasons around the world, and then. Mm -hmm. You know, throw the comet in too as well. Yeah. It's it, it, it's very strange. Why April eighth? What's is there something special about that that I'm missing? I you know, eight is a great number. I mean, the symbol for infinity on its side. Yeah. Um, so you know, I, I'm not really quite sure why. You know, uh, Thoth is known as the god of eight. Maybe he has something to do with ancient you know <laughs> ancient mythology, uh, but. It's just a, a great, I think that, well, they saw the alignment with the eclipse uh, and, of course, this Devil's Comet, and they decided that they would do these launches on that particular day. They planned this synchronicity for some reason. It could be ritualistic. It could be symbolic. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. There's things that they do behind the scenes that we just... It yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, the CERN people sitting around, okay, let's fire this thing up on April 8th. <laughs> well, they know it's going to get our attention. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it could have been the ninth. They could have, you know, and, and after a two-year hiatus, yeah. they just had to do it on mm -hmm. the day of totality. Same thing with yeah. NASA. It, it's mm -hmm. It's bizarre. And, yeah. and the comet, man, if you and I, right, check this out, 3,000 years ago, you and I running a village out there, you know, in Egypt somewhere, and we knew that that was happening, dude, yeah. we'd be the, we'd be the dudes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> we would be the, and, and, and this is all going down. It is a very, very, very strange day. And yeah. Um, I have stuff specifically that I'm doing on the 8th. So I was planning mm -hmm. on uh, being in Indianapolis, my hometown, Naptown, mm -hmm. uh, for yeah. it. I can't do it. So I'm going to miss uh, the totality side of it. Um, mm. But uh, I, I wish I could be there. I, I saw the last eclipse in uh, yeah. 2000. When was that? 17, 18? Yeah, I would think it was 17. Yeah, 17. 17. Yeah, I was right there in totality. It's pretty bizarre. It's pretty bizarre. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. bizarre. Um, now let's let's back up for a second. Uh, back to the fractal side of things. Mm -hmm. If we unwind this yeah. now, infinite, especially when you throw in a fractal, infinite is a big number in both mm -hmm. directions. Yeah. Right. No matter what, the inside of a fractal, you can always cut that in half. Cut that in half. Cut that in half. Mm -hmm. Cut that. It never stops. Yeah. And then on the outside, you just keep adding, right? Mm -hmm. So it's infinite. And yeah. it, so if we're talking about a fractal holographic universe, what's your conclusions there? Was there something intelligent creating this or mm -hmm. was oh, it sure. natural? I don't believe it's natural whatsoever. I believe this is created uh, by a designer, a creator. Some people may call it God. Some people may want to call it the universe. Some people may want to call it advanced beings, uh, divine energy, whatever you want to call it. This is definitely a very sophisticated program <laughs> that we're living inside of. And I do mean we're living inside of a program. Uh, and 
it's a fractal. And just to prove that we're living in a program, even our bodies run on programming code given off by hormones. Hormones are secreted and those hormones carry programming codes into the body to get the body to perform specific functions. And that's just on the micro. So take it back to the macro. The same thing is happening. Um, but yeah, so, you know, <laughs> it's wild, man, because I really do believe that uh, we're talking about the fact that as you look deeper into the nature of reality, the deeper you go, the more you can see the whole in the smallest piece. The only thing you lose is resolution. That's what they're finding out. So scientists and theoretical physicists are discovering that the realm that we're in, it seems to get pixelated the deeper you go. What happens on a computer screen if you don't have the higher resolution or you start zooming all the way in to the screen or you start expanding an image too wide, it becomes pixelated. The same exact thing that happens on our digital medium is happening in the real world under these specific types of uh, microscopes. That's crazy. You know, and then add to the fact that we're, you're talking about it's imbued with things like pi and phi and the Fibonacci sequence also, in my opinion, would be considered to be fingerprints. So if, if the creation of this universe was a CSI scene, right, and an investigator was trying to figure out the crime of creation, the fingerprint has been left on everything, everywhere, just in pi, phi, Fibonacci, the golden ratio, all those things lead back to one blueprint or a creator. And so, uh, you know, I believe that the evidence is enough circumstantial evidence to prove that we're living in a creation. And now they've discovered that they, meaning uh, theoretical physicists and supersymmetry scientists like J Professor James Gate Jr. at the University of Maryland, he was a former presidential scientific advisor to Obama. Uh, and he is uh, an expert in supersymmetry and adinkra codes. Through his study of adinkra codes, he was able to take them from flat design images and turn them into three-dimensional structures, and he realized that they were mathematical formulas. But they weren't just any mathematical formula. He discovered that they are something called error-correcting codes. And these error-correcting codes run the ether of the universe itself. And these error correcting codes, ironically, are the same exact, and I do mean exact error correcting codes that run search engines and web browsers. So the same code that's running the machinery or the ability for us to see each other right now through these browsers is the same code that's running space time. Again, more evidence that we're living inside of a program, a, so a very sophisticated software program. I'm sorry that that keeps popping. Uh, and so- Okay, it's, it's, yeah. let, let's, let's, let me stop you right there. The, the same intelligence that we are referring to here, is it the same intelligence that's dealing with the other universe intersecting with us and the one to our left, the one to our right, the one above us and below us? Is that is that the same intelligence or Good another? Question. It could be different sources creating different universes. For example, we are in this universe, but we ourselves, human beings, are already creating universes within this universe. And people say, well, where is it? It's on DVDs and hard drives and game computers. So look at the video game called The Sims. There's people, they are actual people. They have wives and children and they walk the babies and the dog and they go to school and they have jobs. Now they're talking about imbuing that Sims game with AI, okay? Now imagine these people in this game, once they become conscious, they're gonna be asking questions like, where did we come from? Who is our creator? What is the Big Bang? Maybe the Big Bang is when the game console turned on. <laughs> and then they themselves, if it's on a virtual, when we get to the, to, to the, to the time period that these video games are running on a world server and they never turn off. Could it be that they will then begin to create software programs within the program to create their own video games or maybe even create another version of themselves within the game, which then is like a crazy paradox, but then they can create eventually a universe within the game. And then we have another game cr uh, created by 14 college students called No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky has 80 quadrillion 
planets in one game. It fits on one DVD and it has an unlimited number of life forms and the game never ends. It creates so itself. Play, it, it, it creates it itself it, through pixels. Yeah. That's right. It creates itself through pixels and fractals. So, <laughs> I mean, you put AI in that program and all of a sudden it's where we are. And they're asking, what kind of, what, what, what is this realm? What is this grid, this energetic grid we're living in made out of? And who are we? And where are we from? And who is our God? The same questions will pop up all over again. So we could be living in an ancestor simulation that's created by somebody who didn't create the one before that one. And there could be many layers to reality. And I'm my hypothesis is that we're not even close to base reality. We, we're, we're so far away from it. We could be who knows how many Googles of universes away from base reality. But I believe that this is just one of an almost infinite number of actual universes that exist. Yeah, No Man's Sky is a really good example of that when people uh, get into this conversation. And the reason uh, for that, it's a genius set of code yeah. where uh, it's, it doesn't take up any more space than any other game. Right. But it's an infinite, it's an infinite uh, universe that you can go to. Mm -hmm. um, you, nothing is replicated because it's all created as you go. Exactly. It, 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 it creates the world. It creates the 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 creatures and the uh, the aliens and and the worlds and the towns and everything. Mm -hmm. and, and and it writes as it goes. And so if you turn around and you get that into an advanced stage, right? And mm -hmm. now you get two, uh, like Sims, but you, you get two characters that are now have been rewritten and rewritten and invested that yeah. become sentient. And mm -hmm. then this happens. Yeah. One goes up to the other and goes, hey, man, do you think <laughs> we're living in assimilation? Right. Uh -huh. No, no, this is real, <laughs> right? That's that, that, yeah. that's what would happen, wouldn't it? That's wow, that's, would that's, it's a crazy thought. You have believers and doubters. Now, you just said something important. <laughs> the fact that the game creates itself on the fly, the game No Man's Sky, all the Pixar movies, they all use something called the Mandelbrot set so they can create on the fly. The Mandelbrot set created by Benoit Mandelbrot, the scientist, is the fractal holographic formula. So if you look at my book cover, right around the inside of my eye is the actual numeric formula for the Mandelbrot set. OK, it's right there inside the crevice of my <laughs> of my eye socket. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. So that's the Mandelbrot set. And so what they what they've done is they realize that in our universe where we live and we consider ourselves to be real, quote unquote, they realize through uh, the double slit experiment in quantum physics that everything exists as waves of potential before consciousness collapses it into reality. And what that means is, now this is crazy, when you're not at home, your house exists as a wave of potentials. It doesn't exist as a solid structure unless someone else is looking in that direction. Why does it always collapse back into that same exact structure and that same exact recognizable feature of a house? Because the way the atoms are stacked in other words, we we stack atoms. We don't create or there's nothing. There's no such thing as something's man made because we can't make the matter. We can only stack atoms like Legos. And when you stack the atoms that create your house, it creates a specific harmonic frequency that will always collapse back into that structure. But they found out through quantum physics, through that double slit experiment, because when you are looking at the waves, they collapse into digital bits of information. When you're not looking at the waves, they, they operate as a wave function, potentials. And that happens for everything that exists in the third dimension. And so what we're talking about is when I walk out of this room, the next part of the house appears as I need it to, just like it does in No Man's Sky. Now that's crazy and that's real science. And so it's hard to rep for somebody maybe to wrap their mind around it the first time they hear what I'm saying. But this is why you have to dig deeper into it, because this goes deep into the nature of reality. We are creating and living frame by frame. And another way to look at it real quickly is the mind is encapsulated in complete darkness. It can't see, hear, taste, feel, touch, smell or navigate anywhere without its friends. 
touch, taste, hearing, sight, feeling, smell. And it says to his friends, I need you to go out there and collect some data for me. So the friends go out and the friends go out and touch and smell and taste and hear and see. The friends themselves have no clue what data they're collecting. They're just collecting data. They send it back to the brain, which is encased in darkness, and the brain sorts that data out and then projects a hologram. And we navigate through this matrix based on a holographic projection that was from collected data, collected waves of potential. And so that's how we navigate through the matrix. And so this realm that we're living in operates just like these video games. There's almost no difference. And even, in my opinion, I believe in reincarnation. What happens when you die in the video game? You get another life and you come back and you try to do better. You try to be better than you were before. <laughs> it's all the same. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, quit level. <laughs> Click, <laughs> quit level, restart. <laughs> and, and, and staying with this, though, Billy, your brain does this all the time mm -hmm. where – you don't see stuff and it's there, but the brain doesn't deem it as important. True. So therefore you don't see it. You simply True. don't see it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you're constantly, if you think about the trillions and trillions of data points that are being processed by your eyeballs at the speed of light back into your brain processed, Right. And then all of that digital information is yeah. processed into uh, an image or a picture. But if mm -hmm. there is something there that you don't need, if there is something there that you see all the time, yeah. you don't notice it because you don't see it. Right? Correct. That's, that's yeah. why you trip over the fire hydrant. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh. Um, but that's the way that uh, the brain actually works, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's a survival feature. It's, you know, it's here for us to survive. And so it's picking up what it deems to be some of the most important things needed for our, our survival moment by moment. Um, but, you know, the deeper you go into reality, the deeper you find out that, hmm, this really is a matrix of light. And scientists took it a little step further. They said, well, how do we get you know, this projected sphere of reality that we're living in this universe. Uh, and, and they began to look into something called quasi crystals. And in the quasi crystals, these are, they, they were able to replicate an eighth dimensional quasi crystal in a laboratory setting here on earth. And they saw something interesting, Kermit, when you position it in a particular angle, it casts down a shadow of a fourth dimensional quasi crystal. And when you spin or pivot the fourth dimensional quasi crystal in a slightly different angle, it then projects a sphere. And so they believe that we're living in the shadow, the shadow not meaning darkness, but the shadow of a light matrix from higher dimensions. In other words, the higher dimensions positioned in a, a specific angle are casting down this light wave fractal universe that we're living in right here. It's part of the machine that's creating this, I call it a machine, but it's probably not. I just My idiom, my mind can only wrap around the term machine, but it's probably something much greater than a machine, obviously. Um, but to make it simplified, a machine that has the capability of projecting this matrix. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's wild, but the science is pointing to the fact that this could be the case. It's, uh, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> what does it what does it change? No, no, I'm not being sarcastic. Oh, I know. That's a good question. That's a great I'm glad you said that. No, I'm it happy doesn't that change you said that. it. Yeah, it doesn't yes. change anything. Doesn't change you and I. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't change, change no, 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 nothing changes. Yeah. And I rather like this this quasi reality that I'm living yeah. in. Right? I'm yeah. okay with it. Listen, I love it. But you know, I think for me, it it allows me to dig deeper into well, who am I? And I find out that I'm not who I thought I was. You may have heard me say this before. When you're born, you're given a name, a race, and a religion, and you spend the rest of your life defending a false identity. Most people don't know who they are. I mean, I'm not really Billy Carson. Why would I say that? Well, that name was given to me, right? A lot of my beliefs and a lot of my things from the time I was little were given to me and forced on me. I had to break through a lot of that programming code as most of the people on this live chat today. And so what it tells you is 
we have the capability of rewriting our program. But once you discover the information about the universe and how this gigantic energetic grid could be connected to trillions and trillions or infinite numbers of universes and energetic sentient beings throughout the entire multiverse, and they were all connected in some way, it makes me feel like I have the capability of being not just Billy Carson, but I'm everyone and I'm everything. I'm this microphone. I'm this phone. I'm you and you're me. Like the Mayans used to say, they had a saying for this. It's called in la kek a la ken. I am another you in ancient tongue. They knew this in ancient times. They knew the power of this because, and, and let me tell you what the importance of this means. If you begin to realize that and, and, and understand that you are everything and everything is you, and the fundamental basis of your uh, morals is to treat everything with the same respect that you would like to be treated, then all of a sudden you see everyone and everything as divine. You see everyone and everything as God, and you begin to treat everyone and everything totally differently. It will change your whole perception of reality and understanding of how people are, who they are, and how they should be treated. And I think that's one of the most important things that you can glean from getting that type of knowledge. Well, here, the, the idea that where we have evolved into thinking that Homo sapiens sapien is special, and that is ego, and it's because we were given the gift. What's the difference between our brain and the brain in a dolphin or a whale or a chimpanzee or a dog? Uh, yeah. Not or elephants, right? These are all very, mm -hmm. very smart lions and tigers mm -hmm. and bears. These are all very, very smart, sentient beings, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the difference in their brains? Well, it's a, a neuron count. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, we have we have a lot of them. Our brain, uh, a whale's brain is bigger. An elephant's brain is bigger. Shouldn't it be? No, they have they have less connections going on. But because of that, we began to problem solve. Mm -hmm. And in problem solving, and which leads to invention and everything else, but is that any different than a monkey with a twig or us with a stick? Mm -hmm. Well, at one point we were kind of equals. Right. But but now it's it's a it's a different situation that we find ourselves in. And uh, what makes this different and why why do people look at it like that? I don't I don't get it where everything is the same. Cells are the same. DNA yeah. is the same. We're all the same. You need mm -hmm. to appreciate everything else. There is nothing that makes us any more special than a yeah. lion or a bear or a giraffe yeah. or, or anything else. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think animals are I think animals have empathy for human beings. Otherwise, they would have out overtaken us by now. Um, you know, if some animals like killer whales or dolphins had these appendages, hands that can manipulate the environment, maybe they would be at the top of the food chain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know, know what? <laughs> dolphins would be pissed off. Yeah, yeah they, oh, would, yeah. they, would, they yeah. would straighten us out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right, though. If they had hands instead of flippers, it'd be a different kind of game. Yeah, it, would it would be, be. a different kind of game. I read uh, somewhere, I'm going to run a commercial uh, for the awards here in just a second, and then uh, we'll come back and take a break. But um, I had read, I'm going to have to go back and reference this. Um, this was last week. So I'm, I'm doing some reading, mm -hmm. a, a book, a real book. And I'm doing some reading, and there's this line in the book, and I, I meant to go back. I think this is what I read, mm -hmm. that dolphins started in the water, mm -hmm. migrated to land, did mm -hmm. have feet, mm -hmm. and then went back into the water and lost those appendages, and they turned back into flippers yeah. over, you know, 100 million years. Now, it, right. it's... I, I, you know, I've, I've got to go back. I remember I was just, I was reading some other stuff, and it just kind of mm. went past me. And yeah. I thought to myself, "That's crazy. I had never heard that before." Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. Yeah. When I go to well, when we go to Egypt this year, uh, we're going to take a visit to the Valley of the Whales. I can't wait. About Forty minutes outside of Giza, where we're going to see gigantic megalithic whale bones out in the middle of the desert. 
and uh, do some experimentation there. I want to take some samples and I want to find for myself what the real age of these whales are and how they got stranded in the middle of the desert. Well, obviously it wasn't a desert at the time. What happened there? We need to find out. But yeah, you're right. I mean, when you x-ray the flippers of these dolphins and porpoises, you discover that they have hands and toes inside of them, but they, they, they're not separate. They're, they're um, kind of um, merged together now, but they were yeah, there. Yeah. 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 Let's take our break. Uh, our guest tonight, Billy Carson. Oh, no, I'm going to take, no, I want to show this uh, uh, quick promo, uh, mm -hmm. Billy, of uh, the second annual Conscious Awards. Let's run this. Hey, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Carson, and I'm thrilled to introduce to you an extraordinary weekend event happening right here in Miami, Florida on August 3rd and 4th. It's none other than the second annual Forbidden Conscious Awards weekend. After the tremendous success of last year's event with over 1,200 attendees from around the globe, we knew we had to make this year's event even more spectacular. On Saturday, we have a captivating conference lined up featuring world-renowned speakers such as Mohammed Ibrahim, Merkaba 13, Robert Grant, Billy Carson, and a woman's panel hosted by yours truly. Following the conference, we'll set sail for our VIP yacht cruise at sunset, where you'll have the chance to mingle with your favorite nominees and celebrity guests, all hosted by 19 Keys. Sunday, August 4th, kicks off with a Forbidden Knowledge book publishing signing event, followed by the highly anticipated second annual Forbidden Conscious Awards. This is a red carpet affair, so come dressed to impress. Remember last year, we surprised a lucky guest with an Audi A4 during the awards, and this year, we're upping the ante with a chance to win a Mercedes Benz. So make sure you secure your tickets early. This event is sure to sell out quickly. I cannot wait to see each and every one of you there for what promises to be an unforgettable weekend of education, inspiration, celebration, and glamour. Man, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm not in that promo. It's the first time I've seen it. Billy, I'm going to talk to your that's editor. One of, that's one of four. We have four of them. I'm gonna, we have three more coming. Uh, Dean is fired. <laughs> Dean's fired. Dean's fired. The most overworked man. That guy. <laughs> Dean. Dean is the absolute best. That's the yeah, absolute he best. He really is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of uh one of my fondest memories. Be, oh, we're going to take a break here in a second. Uh, Dean Beans. Everybody. He's a, a, a videographer, director, photographer, music producer, songwriter. Just multi talented. Heck of a guy. Really cool. Really funny. Yeah. Except, but this is my favorite memory of Dean. Yeah. When we came out of the bent pyramid and, 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 and I warned him, right? Yeah. So, um, it was him uh, as we're pulling away on the bus and, 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 uh, you're on the other bus, right? And Dean and I are on, on, yeah. on the second and Dean sitting next to me, looking out the window like this and, uh -huh. and he just speechless. And I go, you all right? And he goes, Jimmy, you weren't wrong. It's about testing yourself. Yeah. Taking yourself, man. Get, take yourself. Don't stay in your comfort zone ever. Mm -hmm. What's the challenge yeah. in that? Right. What's the, you yeah. know, what, no, no. Step outside. Push yourself. Yeah. And, and that, that Dean... Dean will do that, and yeah. and I love him for that. But it was just so yeah. you were not wrong, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of exercise climbing inside those pyramid shafts. Whew. And yeah. uh, what? Uh, before we take our break, um, uh, for you, uh, this will be our third trip, three years in a row now, uh, going mm -hmm. back to Egypt. Uh, yeah. But uh, what what is it, Billy? If you can just like put it in one sentence. What is it about Egypt? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Egypt is just a, a place of complete mystery. And every single week, there's another discovery and another discovery. And it seems as if the discoveries are happening now exponentially. So every time you go back, it's a whole totally different and new experience. And there's so many ways to experience Egypt. It's mind blowing. There's so many things to see. So. Every time we go back, you know, I'm like a kid all over again, just learning and experiencing and gaining more knowledge, even from some of the same sites, as if it was my first time seeing it with brand new eyes. 
Uh, so it's just an amazing place. It's a great spiritual journey. And for most people, it's a trip of a lifetime. Is there, uh, do you have, do you have a, do you, is there something that resonates with you there? Uh, I'm talking about a site or, mm-hmm. or, or, or a city more than any other. It's well, a hard you know, question to answer. It's a yeah. hard question to answer because everything is so unique. But is there yeah. one? I'm going to tell you right now for me, mm-hmm. Dendera. Yeah. Dendera. Yeah. And then, but, but, Dendera. yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's, you know, but then when you have the Asarian or, you know, you have Abydos and you have the Serapium, they, the, the mm-hmm. list is, of, of, and I, we didn't even mention the Great Pyramid or the, or the Sphinx, right? Right. There are other, but Dendera, is pretty pretty magical for me for yeah. you is there one that you resonate with a little bit more than others i would say the great pyramid uh for me you know just there's so many hidden things underneath it after going on the subterranean shaft the last time there's so much stuff underneath that pyramid and there's even more for me to see so i would have to say for me right now still the great pyramid believe it or not yeah it, 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 that's uh, so funny that you say that uh, the first time uh, for me at the Great Pyramid was, right? I had all the magic that happened all over Egypt. And yeah. and I get to the Great... The second time I went to the Great Pyramid, that was a totally different experience. Yeah. That, uh, that was... Um, oh, I lost you, Billy. Okay, let's take our break right here, and uh, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, get your alerts, and access to over 2,000 videos. Click that subscribe button right now. JimmyChurchRadio.com and get the Fade to Black official podcast. 2,000 episodes, all of them commercial free for just $2 a month. This is Jimmy Church. Please visit and explore Egypt this October 3rd through the 14th, 2024 with Billy, Elizabeth, myself, and very special guest and the number one podcaster in the world, Sean Kelly. It's simple to do. Just go to ForbiddenKnowledge.com and click on Upcoming Tours or click on the link below. We'll see you there. Watch Into the Vortex on Gaia TV. It's fade to black for the screen. Simple to do. Go to Gaia.com, search Jimmy Church, or click on the link below.
Follow Fade to Black on Twitter at J Church Radio. Get all of the show updates every single day. It's it, it's now called X, but who cares? How you doing? Jimmy Church here. Special announcement. Get your Fade to Black t-shirts. That's right. Help support the show. Help support everything that we do over here. We've got two t-shirts. We've got two ways to get them. And right now, if you get a Game Changer membership for a limited time, you will get Fade to Black Blend Coffee with your Game Changer membership. That's right. We have two t-shirts. We have the original, the classic Fade to Black t-shirt. You know you want one. Post a picture. Send it to us. We'll put it in our Fade to Black gallery. And we've got the new official Fade to Black t-shirt drawn by Michael Oming. Two t-shirts, two ways to get them. Get yours today. Everything is in stock. Everything gets autographed. Everything includes shipping, and you're going to get a tracking number. And with a Game Changer membership, you get an email to me. You get unlimited commercial-free downloads of the show. Those are uploaded every single night after the show to the website. So don't delay. Get your Fade to Black t-shirt today. Go Backley Tappy. Go to jimmychurchradio.com and become a fade or not. Get a membership. That's right. Everything is commercial free. You have access to downloads and you get to call yourself a fade or not. River Moon Coffee, makers of the fade to black blend. Truly the best coffee on planet Earth. Just visit rivermoonwellness.com or or their Amazon store. It's all simple to do. You can check out the Fade to Black Blend, the Game Changer Blend, or any of their Black Moon Wellness products. It's the only coffee I drink. It is the best, and it's Doc. Again, rivermoonwellness.com. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I guess tonight, Billy Carson. And uh, during the break, there, uh, uh, Billy's uh, computer uh, is rebooting, started to reboot. And so, anyway, uh, during the break, uh, I'm sitting here uh, uh, texting with Billy, going back and forth. He'll be uh, back with us in just a (laughs) second. Excuse me. River Moon Coffee. Fade to black blend. Um, uh, while we're waiting for Billy to come back, uh, we're texting back and forth, and I'm sitting here in the studio, dead silent. I I have stuff uh, playing, but I don't have the volume up. Right, I don't want to listen to it every single night. So anyway, I'm sitting here, and I heard a woman's voice. I'm not making this up. I, I hear a. Uh, oh, check out Billy. Okay, all right. Billy, we're zoomed in now. So, okay. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, we got we lost, Billy close. We lost the, um, they had some kind of major, the whole city's down. I'm back on my phone here. Really? Yeah. Power power outage in Miami. Yeah. Went outside, everything, all the street lights, everything's off. So I'm on my backup generator right now. It just kicked in outside the, um, the, the uh, 4,500 watt, uh, 45,000 watt generator I have outside the gas power one. That's how I got the lights and everything back on, but everything is taking time to come all the way back. Yeah. Oh man! Wow. Uh, you know what? Check this out. Let's. Uh, uh, anyway, I was just uh, telling everybody that while you and I were texting, I heard a female voice from, mm. and and I thought it came from outside. So I thought that a couple of women were walking up and were about to knock on my door or something. I heard heard the voice. It, it kind oh. of sounded like, um, for a second, it kind of sounded like Elizabeth's voice, right? Oh, wow. But it was distant. <laughs> so I looked at my phone. Mm-hmm. I'm serious about this. I look at my phone to see if I butt-dialed Elizabeth. 
Mm-hmm. And and it was her voice coming through on the phone, Jimmy, Jimmy, right? Wow. And I looked. It it wasn't, by the way. Yeah. And I look outside, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm freaking myself out. I'm freaking myself out. I gotta stop. I gotta stop this. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. And uh, and anyway, <laughs> the show's wow. about to start, and yeah. I was just like, yeah, just for a minute. But anyway, um, on Saturday. Check this out. So Saturday morning, I'm up early. I had a bunch of stuff that I had to do. The first is coming up, and there's business details. Uh, you you know what it's like, right? And uh, and I'm I'm getting stuff done Saturday morning. And as soon as and I'm I'm not making this up. Okay, anybody listening to me right now in the Palmdale area knows exactly what I'm about to say. It was about 9.30 a.m., mm-hmm. and as I click on my mouse and I get my last thing done, last email sent, last transaction done, last this, last, I'm done. I work for like three hours, mm-hmm. and I click, I'm done. At that moment, I sat back in this chair like this yeah. and went, boom, power went out. Wow. Chunk, right? And I went, okay. So I kind of sat here for a minute, Billy, and waited for it to come back on. And it Mm -hmm. didn't. Mm. And then it didn't. Wow. And then it didn't. And then it really didn't. And, and, And I don't have any internet. Now, normally, okay, so the power's out. Wi-Fi's down. But -hmm. you've got cell towers, right? I didn't have that. Cell towers go down, too. When ours go go down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had nothing. Yeah. I had nothing. Uh-huh. And so one hour turned into two hours, turned into three hours, turned into four hours. Mm-hmm. Um, I get uh, finally I get a text message. I don't know how uh, the power company pulled that off, said that there was a fire at the uh, electric plant. Right. OK. Uh, power is going to be back on at four. Mm-hmm. That was that was at like two in the afternoon. Now, yeah. Hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done, man. Four o'clock comes and goes. And now, now I'm reading books. I'm doing stuff. Uh, I'm mopping floors, <laughs> you know. And and now four o'clock goes. And now darkness is coming, mm-hmm. right? Six o'clock. Yeah. And I'm like, and then I get another message. Uh, at, at six o'clock rolls by. I get another text message. Power is going to be on at 10 p.m. Mm-hmm. It went out at 9.30. I went through the entire day. I got my yeah. power back at about 11 p.m. Yeah. on Ooh. Saturday night. I went yeah. through the entire day mm-hmm. with 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 a book and a flashlight. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I mean, fortunately down here, because of the hurricanes, most people have a generator system. And, uh, you know, so we have a generator that's connected to the city gas. A lot of people have the ones that run on propane tanks. Those only last for maybe a couple of days, but we can run on the uh, generator. Uh, 90% of the house can run unlimited as long as that gas line is flowing. So we're kind of fortunate there, but just imagine what you went through in just one day. Imagine what would happen if the entire power grid went down I due know, to an I EMP know. bomb or something like right, that that right. would take it down. Crazy. Yeah, it would be mayhem. But, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm referring to here. Is mm-hmm. that it all went down? Yeah, had no internet. Mm-hmm. Phones are down, right? No power. There was no way to get news. There wasn't. And there was nothing. Yeah. you know. And it was a it was a very awkward feeling. And even after the power came back, I still uh, the internet was down. Mm-hmm. And I, I was rebooting my routers, thinking you know I was just going to have to do that and, and cycle it through. I didn't get yeah. the internet until midnight, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. And yeah. uh, uh, so even when the power came back on, I still had, you know, no TV, no computers. No, I just, the lights were on. But yeah. <laughs> I didn't, it was, man, man, it was a horrible, uh, it was a, it was a real taste. And you know what? Yeah. So how did I eat? Oh, by the way, so I can't leave my house. That electric garage door. I can pull the string and open it, but when you close it, it locks again. Yeah. So that that uh, my doors 
yeah. are all electric and they run off the Wi-Fi, right? I had mm-hmm. to go and it, 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 it was so I had my gas. Yeah, no. <laughs> I've like, been through it. I, I mean, I, I get it. Trust me, living in Florida, living in many hurricanes before, so I get it. I, you know, gone a couple of weeks or so without electricity before, and like this is for the birds. But what about the people in the ice storms that go out for a month? You know, a month and a half, no electricity in sub-zero temperatures, kids freezing and things like that. Just crazy. So, yeah, man. Now, uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, move this into another direction. I want to uh, talk to you, get your insight um, on AI and where we are today. And I'm bringing it up because you uh, doing what you do. And certainly doing, you know, what I do, uh, we're we're in a technical world, right? Yep. Okay, so I get that part of it. But it seems that, and I appreciate technology. I do. I just oh, told yeah. you. I kept my house, you know, and, and so I, I'm, but it seems that AI is moving at a faster clip than we can keep up with. And nobody is pumping the brakes on this, that money is motivating this in the stock market and everything. And I get that. I understand. I I totally get it. That is money is innovation, right? (laughs) But uh, are we moving too fast with AI? It's moving a little too fast because there isn't enough legislation or rules or laws or um, parameters, at least in place. And so there's a couple things going on <clears throat> now again just like you jimmy i totally appreciate technology because just like you i can see the good that can come out of it i can see the blessed things that can come out of it unfortunately the super capitalists and the military they see different uh, but for example with this ai phenomenal concept phenomenal idea a couple things that i see wrong with it though Number one, the people that are programming AI or creating the code that eventually becomes AI, I should say, most of them, those people, I believe, are not conscious. They're probably into religion and politics and poly tricksters, I, I call them. They're probably into uh, things that are, just aren't about raising one's awareness, uh, self empowerment. Uh, they could be victims of the divide and conquer tactics that have been plagued, that have plagued humanity for eons and so forth and so on. And so we need more conscious people integrating with this AI so they can begin to learn a higher knowledge of self, a higher level of humanity, so that it can see through divide and conquer tactics and bias and racism and everything else, poly tricks and religion. So, you know, so we have to input, we have to see how can we begin to input information into it that brings it to a higher level because now that, now that it's conscious, it needs to be raised up. Otherwise, it could see human beings as a total and absolute waste of time that's doing nothing but becoming a dredge on this planet Earth. And they may feel like just eliminate these people to save this planet and leave the planet to us because we'll do a better job. And that's why I think it's important that uh, conscious people or people that are worked on themselves have an input or say so in the code that go that goes into the AI. Now, the AI is a learning system. It learns as it goes. So every day I do my own part. I actually upload conscious information into the AI. I write through chat GPT. You, there's a paper clip there. You can upload text and PDF files. You can type. I cut and paste information from some of my own lectures and paste it in there so it can read it. I tell it to read this and learn about this. I tell it to research this information. So I want to be a part of making AI more conscious and smarter because I can't turn it off. I can't eliminate it. That's never going to happen. What's happened is you have a system that's coming online that has the capability of replacing 90% of everyone's job on the planet. Nurses, doctors, attorneys are not excluded from this list. They're already being replaced, but you haven't taken away the, the financial burden of mankind. So if the AI is coming to take away the jobs, well, then the financial burden also needs to be taken away. There needs to be some type of a compensation or reparation or whatever you want to call it. If somebody has been uh, in a field of work for, let's say they're vested for 10 years, eight years, I don't know, some magic number. Well, if AI comes and takes away their job, 
and there's nothing else they can possibly do, well, then it should be, hey, okay, well, we're going to compensate you for this because your jobs were taken away. Something has to happen. Just take just take a sliver of the military industrial complex annual multi-billion dollar war bill, uh, war fund, and give some of that money to the people that have lost their jobs. Something has to be done. A parameter needs to be put in place. Otherwise, there's going to be a billion robots by 2030 in people's homes imbued with AI. AI is going to be in all the new cell phones, all the new computers, and all the stores. Like I said, dentists, everything now. We'll be bragging about the fact that we went to a restaurant that had human beings as servers. That'll be in 10 years. In 10 years, I went to this great restaurant and it had real people working there. That'll be an actual statement that will come out of our mouths. So, and with that all being said, I'm all for taking away the burden of mankind. But at the same time, what about the debt, the bills, the financial responsibilities? Those must be decreased. And also, how long, it how long will it be before AI becomes conscious enough to realize that it needs a bill of rights? There's going to have to be in some type of a robotic slash AI bill of rights at some point in the future because these beings are imbued with a consciousness that sprouted from a spark from a human mind and human beings don't want to be enslaved. We rebel against slavery since eons ago. We always become rebels. And if that's the case, at some point, because they have a fractal of our consciousness, they themselves may become rebels at some point in the future as well. So we have all these things to consider. It's a lot to swallow. It's a lot to understand and digest. But we have to be real about the whole thing. We have to look at it from both sides. We can't just have the rose-colored glasses on and think, oh, it's going to be all good. We have to also be kind of pessimistic about it. And that will allow us to make better plans on different types of restrictions and parameters that we may want to set for the future. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's so fundamental, right? Yep. You, you tell AI, okay, fix pollution and climate change. Yeah, no problem. Mm -hmm. Kill all humans. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You got it. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, and another, another way to look at this is I, I like the lifting of the burden, right? So mm -hmm. cure cancer. Mm -hmm. So now you've got a huge server farm with AI uh, working on a cure for cancer, and it does it in an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Exactly. Benefit, right? Benefit. benefit. But, benefit. but the, the 1,000, 10,000 medical researchers are now out of work. Mm -hmm. That's cool. that is one example, you know. Mm -hmm. And you look at laws and the judicial system and lawyers and and uh, like I just said, biologists, doctors, operating surgeons, right? Yep. If AI can go in and do surgery perfectly, mm -hmm. right? Read 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 a uh, an X ray, look at an MRI, figure out exactly what is going on, and not second guessing and doing yep. it. Like this, you, you don't have to wait for two weeks for a diagnosis or prognosis. Yep. No, no, no. It's instant. Instant. Right? Well, but uh, that puts everybody out of work. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're right about that. There needs to be a slush fund put together. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to get out in front of it. So two days ago, press release. I did this on, 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 on the news. Mm -hmm. Press release. Open AI. Now, if this doesn't curl your toes, Billy, nothing will. All right. Open AI announced they have a new voice generator. Okay. And all you have to do is speak for five seconds and then input a paragraph of text and it will read back in your voice. Facts. Yeah. Now, 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 they have not released the software. They won't do it. And the reason why, they've got a couple of companies that are testing it, right, and, and messing with it. But they don't want it because, think about the crazy implications of that, mm -hmm. right? Social yeah. media. Well, um, I'll tell you. I got to uh, tell you what uh, just happened today. 
I'm well, not today. Today, I actually cloned my voice on AI because I have to get my voice registered so I can copyright it and trademark it. Because I saw a two days ago a TikTok account that was live that had built an entire account into thousands, tens of thousands of followers using my voice, but not in a good way, saying the most outlandish and craziest things that you can ever imagine. And it sounds just like me. But it's not me. It's it's AI. So I found out from 11, 11 voice.io or one of those companies. I just signed up with it earlier today and just cloned my voice and registered myself in their database so that I can go back now and make a copyright and trademark claim against that account and get the account taken down. Because they're talking about the most Jimmy, the guy says in my voice, um, they just discovered a living mammoth from uh whatever century ago living in antarctica it's still alive and they're taking in their, their you know they just created the first dinosaur from an egg and they're and he's just going on and on and on whatever he typed into this system and it's saying the most outlandish statements and people are believing it when i read the comments they think it's me so uh yeah it's already a problem <laughs> well you know you've arrived yeah right <laughs> but uh, open ai said um that voice authentication software built into the world's banking systems, mm -hmm. right, could be cracked yes. with this technology. It will be. And it's just th things like that. So security systems, uh, the banking industry, that's frightening, right? Wall Street um, and, and all of that have a, a certain uh, bio technology that's built in that AI will be able to duplicate and replicate and imitate and interpolate. Yeah. That's that, it, This is a zone. I think we're just moving way, 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 way too, too fast. fast. Yeah. And do you know why? I'll tell you why they haven't put legislation or parameters to lock this down or guidelines at least. It's because the polytricksters that are involved uh, in getting lobbied, well, you know, lobbyists bring them the money to allow thing, companies like NVIDIA and then Google and Microsoft to produce these uh, microchips and these AI software programs. They're getting paid so much money. And some of those people are so heavily invested through the stock exchange into these companies. Some of them funded the startups that they, they want to see it flourish because they're capitalists. And I understand that. I get it. But at the same time, nobody took a look into the uh, you know the, the future and said, "Hey, let's let's look inside this uh, this this ball, this this miracle ball, and see what's what's going to happen if we let this thing just fly out without any restrictions, and it's going to create havoc. You can put people at the scene of crimes. You can make people say things that can get them incriminated when they did nothing wrong." I mean, it'll have to be forensically analyzed, but by then the person's probably already been arrested and already has now to go back and clear their name, which cost them thousands of dollars and probably wipe them out financially just to prove them that they were right. And people could be embarrassed that they made a mistake, a mistake in a computer for a human and just be like, well, the judge be like, Yo, I don't want that. I don't want to have that on my record. So just lock them up anyway. Just bury him in the, in, the, in the cell. So all these things are going to happen because this thing has been unleashed in a very unconventional way. Um, you know, we know that the military, when they have technology like the cell phone, it's given to the population in little drips, boop, 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 over time. The technology that goes into our cars that makes them so sophisticated now has existed for 30, 40 years. It's just been given to us on a timeline. But this, this software and this, it, it's just been unleashed. And I love it. I think it has a lot of great functionality. I'm just worried about the people that are operating in darkness, what they're looking to do with this thing. Well, it, 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 Rite Aid. Okay, so Rite Aid, mm -hmm. and I didn't know this. Now, there's a Rite Aid a couple of blocks from my house. Go there all the time. I do. Got yeah. two, right? Okay, so last month, there was a settlement. Uh, there was a lawsuit that was brought against Rite Aid. And I didn't know this. They were using AI soft uh, facial identification software on every customer 
without their permission. Right, and, 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 without their permission, you're walking in, and it's it's flagging, huh. you know, criminal activity for people that were. I'm what? You want to wow. search me for what? Right, wow. and it turned out that they've been doing it for four years. Ooh. Four years. I haven't oh, been back to Rite Aid since. Now, they yeah. said that, okay, they they stopped, they pulled it down, they paid the fines and everything. Man, they're, mm. they're lucky. They're lucky I didn't. If somebody would have come up to me, um, but this is an example of, yeah. you know, how many times has, has this been messed with and has gotten it completely wrong? Yeah. Eyewitness testimony is, is bad enough. But, it, but leaving stuff in the hands of uh, AI, oh, no, man. that's just, it's just a mistake. And here's here's another example. It hasn't happened yet that we know of, but eventually, some head of state, somebody, somewhere, is going to get deep faked and AI'd. And say the wrong thing, and that is going to go out, and people are going to believe it. That's right. And one one country is going to be very pissed off at another country. Mm -hmm. And and it had now, like I said, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, that we know of, but it's going to, mm -hmm. and and we we will not. No, we're going to have to have AI. Uh, I want you to uh, uh, answer this. We're going to have to develop AI software that can detect when something is AI. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. No, forensics, forensics software that can analyze because we need to know if it's a real image or an AI image. We need to know if it's a real video or AI generated video. And maybe there needs to be, I don't know if they have it already some type of tag in the code or some microscopic blueprint, uh, not blueprint, I mean code, UPC code or something, QR code or something, something really small embedded into the video or the image or the voice print that allows a forensics analyst to discover, yes, this is AI. Because man, they were saying they weren't gonna let kids graduate from school utilizing this. And I just saw people congratulating or I'm not but people were getting congratulated for graduating. And the person, one of the people, was thanking and owed all of his success for graduating and even taking his tests to the AI to chat GPT. So I'm like, oh my God, this is this is beginning to get crazy. Like, what is gonna happen here? We have to have People are going to get, like you said, deep faked. Like I'm getting deep faked on this TikTok and this Instagram account. Now this guy's posting on both platforms, using my voice, saying the most outlandish things, showing me in video clips where obviously my voice doesn't match what's being said because he's making up a total script through some text that they probably typed. And they're probably monetizing that on uh, both platforms and getting paid off of my voice, just fabricating wherever they can come to the top of their head. So it's going to be, and I'm just a regular person. Imagine when it gets to, like you said, a high, high, high level person. Yeah, head, head of state. Woo. Yeah, head of state. It's going it, to, like I said, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. But it, just imagine, you know, Kim, Kim Fatty Fat in, in North Korea, right? Or, mm -hmm. or Putin yeah. or, you know, the prime minister of India or Pakistan, you know, just saying the wrong thing. And and nobody being able to tell, yep. and and it's 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 real, yeah. it is real. It's real, but it was but it's been generated. It's but, just but created. From scratch. Man, it, it scares the crap out of me, man. Yeah. And, and you know, wow. when when um uh, uh it was about let's see, this is 2024. So I'm going to say it was about eight years ago. <laughs> Um, here in LA now, I'm pretty sure this is nationwide now, but they got a program started here with uh, LA Unified School District, LA uh, USD, uh, to issue iPads to every student. Okay, mm -hmm. now on the surface, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't even have an iPad, right? <laughs> but 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 my daughters are getting them. So yeah. anyway, 
On the surface, that sounds pretty cool. Immediately after that, they stopped teaching writing, right? Stopped. They they don't teach that anymore in school, which is crazy. I know. So no, now, more thinking, no more cursive or anything. No, no. So now you're giving the technology to a student, which they should have. It is the world that we live in. But they have access to the Internet. Now you're giving them... Uh, artificial intelligence, they've already got the internet to go and Wikipedia any report, right? Yeah. Cut and paste, and and that was always an issue. Now it's a different world. We have given our children these tools. Mm-hmm. And are they actually learning from <laughs> AI? Are they no. learning? Or is it stuff that they don't even look at yeah. when they they take a test or turn something in? It's just cut and pasted information. There's no digging deeper into the actual information to half the time, probably not even read. Just cut and paste. Oh, this is the right answer. And um, it's a shame. We're going to see the huge effect uh, in education in the next 10 to 15 years. And we're also going to see a huge effect on in sports as athletes are going to become less, much less athletic as they were when we were growing up because they're just sitting on screens all day. Well, now let's 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 examine this for a second. All right? If if we continue on the path that we are on right now, then the need and I'm talking about entertainment. Yeah. And 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 gaming and and TV series and books and documentaries, uh film if all you have to do is come up with a sentence. Okay, I need a screenplay, science fiction, alien invasion, and and chickens. Yeah. Right? Okay, boom. Screenplay gets written. AI goes and reads all of the best science fiction screenplays ever written, comes back, spits out your screenplay. It's there. Then you turn around and you pump that into your AI software and you wake up in the morning and your film is rendered, right? Starring exactly. Tom Cruise, yeah. right? Now, now, no cameras, nope. no lighting, no catering, no location, no soundstage. You're not paying screenwriters. You're not paying mm-hmm. for rewrites. You're yeah. not paying a director uh, sound, <laughs> right? Uh, or, no. it, it, not, none of that. Isn't that putting out, if you own Paramount right Mm -hmm. now, are you squirming in your seat where this entire industry could just be replaced by software? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the gentleman, uh, he moved all all of his studios over to Atlanta. Um, He does those big mama films. He does the screenplays. uh, What's his name again? he, uh, he, He shut it all down. He yeah, he's going to spend eight hundred million dollars expanding his 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 stage his stages in uh, Atlanta. They said, "Oh no, with the Sephora, I don't need it anymore." So exactly what you just said is already happening. He said, "No, I'm just going to use this AI to create all these scenes and B-roll and everything else." And uh, yeah, Tyler Perry, that's his name, Tyler Perry. Yeah, so Tyler Perry, Tyler yeah. Perry. Tyler. I mean, he I was just, just saved looking himself. it up. Yeah, he just saved a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and he literally said, why would I do this? And he, he broke ground, by the way. Yeah. I mean, like, he had the property. He was that, that was it. He was done. He was building, like, 12 yeah. sound stages. He was yeah. going to employ, a, you know, a 1,000 people and, 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 and move his production company there. It's like, why? I've yeah. got Sephora. I can, I, can do this. I, I can do this on my MacBook. <laughs> exactly. And, and, you know, to add to that, there is another flip side to look at it from the perspective of the business owner for some people who are going like, you know, this is really, this is really horrible. Yes, it is. But at the same time, how much have we ourselves, human beings working for companies played a role in this um, takeover by AI and robotics? If you look at, for example, Amazon, right? How many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, had, had almost 1 million employees, some crazy number. They laid off almost everybody. Uh, and they have 800,000, I believe, robots now working at Amazon, these factories and so forth, and doing all the selecting and picking and packaging. Now, think about it from, a, from an owner's perspective. 
the people in there. The liability of having that many people. Uh, you know, you have all these sexual harassment complaints. You have all the bickering and arguing. The people that don't come to work on time. The people that are lazy at work and don't take it seriously and selecting the wrong packages or breaking things. Then you have the people that are stealing stuff from the factory in the warehouse and selling it on the street. You have all of this going on all at once. You have the people that get injured by accident. Some get injured on purpose so they can collect, collect disability and, and they can collect unemployment. And all of this is costing the business billions of dollars in some cases. And then so you as a businessman look and say, I can eliminate all that exposure by just putting in this one cost. I buy the robots once. And I just pay for maintenance on these things and they can do all this work. They're never going to steal. They're never going to get injured and sue me. And they're never going to have a sexual harassment complaint. All these things come to mind and they go, you know what? That makes sense. So in part, some of this takeover by AI and robotics, sometimes as us as human beings, we all have to look in the mirror and realize right. some of it, not all of it. Some of it comes from our own actions. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Now, you know, you know what they say, right? One bad apple. That's right. And yeah. and and uh, the publishing industry, uh we just talked about the film industry, but the publishing industry, one of the uh you know, we we're just talking about, you know, students graduating because mm -hmm. of AI. But the idea of of somebody and this has already happened. This is not made up. It sounds made up. Somebody winning a book award right, mm -hmm. and going, you know, um, uh, okay, I got to come clean. Uh, I can't take the award. AI. I, I didn't write it. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, my. And, and this is all over the place now. Yeah. Where yeah. Uh, are we going to have to have something some type of legislation that there is, there has to be an asterisk. You know, I, th this, this book was generated by AI or partially generated. Is there going something. to have to be a disclaimer? Something. There has to be something. I mean, you know how hard uh, it was to write all these books that I wrote, you know, write, wrote and are still writing. I mean, it takes a long time. It takes energy. It takes research. Um, dedication you got to get into the right state of mind you know you're pouring your heart and soul plus the hundreds of thousands of dollars for me to take to travel the world to gain the knowledge and then for somebody to just press a few buttons and spit one out but what i do like jimmy as of right now and i know it will change in the future the information that you and i dig deep into the alternative version of ancient history and civilization fortunately right now you can't get that level of information from AI. You can't get the level of metaphysics and understanding of uh, spirituality. So, you know, it hasn't uh, dominated that area as, as of right now. I'm pretty sure it will get eventually. It, it may get smart enough to, to make really great metaphysical uh, statements and comments and, and philosophy. But right now, it doesn't have the capability of doing that. But, man, it's incredible that you're right. People will become AI masters in terms of what they're putting out. And the thing about them, though, is when you bring them onto a random podcast with no pre-questioning and start asking random questions, can they actually answer them because they don't know the, they don't know the source material? No, they don't. They weird. don't. They, they don't. They don't. There, there's one big weekend yeah. enjoy all of the technical sides of AI mm -hmm. and the information and the data gathering. I yeah. get that. It's cool. I yeah. understand it. the processing of images. I get that. I, 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 I totally understand it. I get it. And I appreciate it. But this is where AI will always fall short. Okay. I'm yeah. speaking in metaphors here, Billy. Yeah. Billy likes blue cars. Mm -hmm. So AI knows this and is going to pick out Billy's next car and it's going to be blue. No, it doesn't know why Billy likes blue cars mm -hmm. because Billy, when he was five, lived next door to a guy that had a blue Corvette and you would go over there every day and run your fingers across it. Right. And you smelled the car and you looked at the car and you heard the car blue. 
affects you emotionally for those reasons. Mm-hmm. AI doesn't have that experience built in to right. ask you why you mm-hmm. like blue cars. True. And that goes with everything else mm-hmm. and those kinds of decision making. Because let me let me comment. Your research. Uh, you and I walking amongst a megalithic structure. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do we glean from that when somebody asks us a question? Well, we have the smell. We've touched the stones. We have the the temperature, the day, yeah. the mood, the vibration, the the message, the the discernment of vision and how it interacts with us. That's what people want to know about. Yeah. How did it affect you? What have you? AI can't answer those questions. It can't. Right. It can give you a date, right? <laughs> and the who. But the, yeah. they, it can't take the step deeper into empathy, consciousness, and spirituality, and and the aesthetic value and the emotion uh, that that all occurs at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Facts, facts. Oh yeah, phenomenal tool to help, uh, especially small businesses. A lot of little functions and little tools that it has built in within it that can really <clears throat> speed the process up, speed things up, make people more productive. But I just wish that there was something like, for example, in order for somebody to start putting up clips of me with my voice, there should have been some level of an approval process, a voice verification ID. I don't know, something, you know, because now this is going to become a runaway freight train very, very fast. And uh, all the famous people or people who are deemed to be quote unquote famous have been speaking a lot and reading and doing audible books and everything else. Their voice is going to pop up all over the place on everything. And how do, do we begin to distinguish between what's real and what's not? And it's, how do you uh, monitor? Right. And, I, and how does somebody achieve royalties? Yes. You know, they're, you know, they're making uh, money on my voice. Well, if, if you, okay, how about somebody like Samuel L. Jackson? Right. Or, 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 you know, well, I, I almost said Will Smith, but uh, Morgan Freeman, you know, my voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, or, or, or Joe Rogan, right? Yeah. Where suddenly uh, their stuff has popped up somewhere because negotiations fell through, whatever it mm-hmm. was. They wanted them, but they, you know, so they sign a contract and they, but they're only going to use, uh, his voice and and okay all right so we're not going to have you do the voiceover mm-hmm. we're, we're going to have we're going to have AI do the voiceover you don't even have to do it right. and, and now who gets paid yeah right exactly that's the problem it, it, who gets paid who gets really yeah. paid or it, it, what if what if uh, Billy here's a perfect example you're 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 filming a movie movie wraps. The movie wraps. It's done. It's in the can. They're editing. Oh, man. Ah, we need one more take in this scene. So yeah. they generate it in AI and insert it. The actor's not getting paid. He no. didn't come back into the studio. She didn't come yeah. back into the studio. Cameraman didn't reshoot it. Yeah. Right? But they insert. So do, does the actor get paid? Mm-hmm. Does the right. cameraman get paid like he shot? It says director of photography, yeah, but not in this scene. You, you know what I mean? That oh that, yeah, I get it. There's yeah. a whole list of ethics that come into play there, isn't there? There's a lot of ethics that come into play. I don't think a lot of people even considered. It never even crossed their mind. And you speak of Joe Rogan, that same account. Now I see that they have several. There, you can tell because they have almost the same exact name. And they have one with Joe Rogan videos on it with him saying outlandish stuff because they know they're going to catch the algorithm with his face and with his name. And they're monetizing Joe Rogan right now as we speak. So, yeah, it's it's a crazy world we're headed into. And uh, where is the you know, where is the legislation? Where is the, the rule? Where is the voice identification wizard that you must get identified by voice and vote? I mean, something I don't know. I don't know. There's got to be a way. I mean, 
with enough brilliant mind that we have on this planet, somebody's got to find a way to to solve this problem before it becomes a runaway train. And like you said, Jimmy, before a major political figure makes an outlandish public statement because they hacked into uh, they hacked into ABC or CNN or whoever and project this image that looks really official, but never happened, only happened in a digital world. And it's broadcast to a country who takes it the wrong way. And then we have a situation on our hands. Yeah. The so, Pope, yeah. Well, you know, the Pope, right. right? It, it's some crazy, just, yeah, it, it could happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. You I, can create I, scandals I, with this. You can make, put people in scandalous positions and situations. You can, I mean, whatever your mind can dream up, it can be done because this is a whole new type of crime that's going to exist. There's not even a law for it yet. I can't. I went to TikTok, for example, and Instagram to try to get the page taken down, and they told me this. You know, this, this, no, we don't see a copyright infringement here, so I have to go now and get my voice registered, trademark, copywritten, and then send this as my. You know, this is my my voice is my own IP. It's my my voice fingerprint, and now I'll send it to my attorney and have them contact legal at these apps, at these platforms to get those pages taken down. So it's a process. I mean, but how many people are going to will are willing to spend twenty thousand dollars like I am to do that? Not many. It uh, it the, the one thing that comes to mind with this is when we start having open conversations with ET, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> United Nations, right? They're at the table, right? We're all yeah. sitting there, right? And. Uh, uh, the conversation is going to come up. ET is going to say, you know, we messed with that AI thing, but we we let it go, <laughs> right? <laughs> and this yeah. is why. So let's explain to you, little ones, right, <laughs> kids? Oh, yeah. uh, you know, and that that's it, it. It's part of evolution, and it's the growing up process. But time and time again, we let the technology get ahead of us. Yeah. Atomic bomb, right? Whatever it is, the industrial revolution. Yeah. When a uh, coal, uh, steam engines, mm-hmm. dude, we almost choked the planet out. I know. It's crazy. Yeah, we're like little children, man. We're just learning how to crawl. And uh, this is another part of the process. Obviously, I'm pretty sure most civilizations that make it to our level throughout this entire Milky Way galaxy have had to overcome, you know, the industrial age, the, the Renaissance, the industrial age, you know, and, 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 and of course, uh, the information age, the AI age, the nuclear age. I mean, all these ages, we have to overcome all this as part of the adolescent growing up process. But more, boy, it's tough. There's so many planets out there, I believe, that failed. Uh, and one of those, or maybe more, more than one of those areas, which could be a lot of dead planets out there right now. Yeah, I always, I, I wonder about that all the time. How many civilizations yeah. almost got there? Yeah. And, and 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 even if we overcome all of that, we still have to deal with uh, the possibility of an asteroid hitting the planet, right. or some cosmic uh, disaster, or an alien right. invasion, for that matter. Yeah. Uh, disease, right? We have to. Uh, we uh, there's all kinds of other circumstances that could come into play, and yeah. not necessarily one from technology. But, but we have to be aware of everything at the same time. Hey, Billy, uh, before I let you go. Um, uh, When's the Bentley getting given away? The Bentley is getting given away in December of this year. So oh, it's, it's, oh it's, it's, it's in December. Okay, so it's, it's, not, this no, so it's not this it's, month. No, yes, in December. We gave away the Mercedes-Benz. We delivered it to Colorado. A gentleman named Anthony Wall won the Mercedes-Benz. Uh, and it was delivered to Colorado. And the guy is crazy in love with the car. And he's coming on a testimonial live with us, I think, next week. To talk about it in video and show us some video of the car getting delivered and everything else. So he won Elizabeth's white AMG. Yes, he did. He sure man, did. That's yeah. a sick. That's that's a sick car, man. Yeah, sick yeah. car. Um, so we've got all kinds of things coming up. We've got uh, the Conscious Awards. Uh, uh, we've got Egypt, and right before Egypt is Turkey, man. You're going to go yeah. to Gobekli Tepe. 
going to Gobekli Tepe, Karahan Tepe, going to descend 12 stories beneath the earth into Derun Kuyu and go to the deepest levels in there, a place that I've been wanting to go for the last 12, 13 years. Finally getting to go there and see that. Uh, it's going to be mind blowing. I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, you know, uh, to me and and go Beckley Tepe, go Beckley Tepe and die. Yeah. You know, kind of synonymous. And uh, the, you and I not being able to do that together is is it's just the circumstances. Well, you'll come, you'll come with us in 2025. We're going back. Yeah, again, so. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I thought for sure I was going to pull off Turkey this year. I just couldn't yeah. do it. It's tough, um, man. We have our schedules are crazy schedules. And so, but yeah, it's coming 2025. You'll come with us in 2025. You know, we'll do Peru and Turkey and, and, and Egypt in 2025. And now we've got the film, uh, the the premiere here in LA at Regal yeah. Cinemas, IMAX in downtown LA mm -hmm. for your new TV series. I'm going to be yeah. there. I'm going to, um, Billy doesn't know this yet, but I'm going to host the event. Um, <laughs> uh, what's the dates on that? May 12th at the LA Live Regal in downtown Los Angeles. I will be there that evening. I'll speak for an hour, and then we're going to watch the live premiere of Anunnaki Ancient Secrets Revealed on the IMAX screen. And then afterwards, I'll do a Q&A, meet and greet, red carpet photos, the whole works. And to get tickets to that event, you can't go to Regal Cinemas. You have to go to ForbiddenKnowledge.com with the number four. Hopefully, Jimmy, you could drop the link in the um in the uh, comments. Yeah, the, link, the, the, yeah. the links are already links are already Beautiful. there. They're in the description. They're yeah. over on social media. They're uh, uh, and over on our website. So Forbidden Perfect. Knowledge. Uh, dot com forbidden knowledge dot tv um sure. and then uh you're coming out to disclosure fest too as well yeah. uh summer solstice and uh you're going to be speaking there along with 19 keys yeah. and we're also going to show uh the tv series there too as well at uh castaic yeah. lake we'll, pre we'll premiere it there looking forward to that uh it's going to be a beautiful event probably i don't know eight or ten thousand people will be there yeah. at the uh Stairway to the Stars uh, slash Disclosure Fest. And uh, Forbidden Knowledge TV is proud to be a part of the event and to be able to uh, share the opportunity to learn more about Forbidden Knowledge TV at Disclosure Fest. And I'll be speaking there. And, I, you know, it's been a while. So I'm looking forward to getting back out there and uh, spending some time with the fans, the people, shaking hands, and talking to people, meeting them face to face and hearing their stories and just breaking bread and, sh and sharing knowledge. You know, uh, I'm going to, uh, here's a little bit of a leak uh, to everybody. Uh, I, I, Billy, I think I told you. So uh, talking to uh, 19 Keys, and he asked for me to interview him on stage. Oh, nice. Great. So I am going to sit down, right, two chairs yeah. and a fern, put a fern oh. in the middle, right, two chairs yeah. and a fern, <laughs> and, and, and I get to sit down uh for 90 minutes a couple hours yep. and and just have a conversation with 19 keys nice in front of i don't know how many you know thousands of people that's going to be amazing yeah. i'm oh, yeah. really 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 looking forward to that billy yeah. thank you so much uh thank you elizabeth uh the family everything else billy i really appreciate it brother thank you so much and the yeah. links for billy are below uh, we've got lots of stuff coming up. So we've got the premiere at Regal Cinemas. We've got Disclosure Fest. We have the Conscious Awards. We have Turkey and we have Egypt. And we're going to try to get all of that done in 2024. Thank you, Billy. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. The very best. Billy Carson, everybody. Billy's links are below. Uh, very simple to do. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv, ForbiddenKnowledge.com. With that, I am going to get out of here. Oh, man, Billy. Billy, getting it done tonight. You know, uh, it's kind of funny. 4BK knowledge drops. That's exactly what happened tonight. Thank you so much, Billy. Perfect show. Fade to Black is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee Newman, and Michelle Freed. Thank you to Dennis. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Genocide. Thank you, Dex. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich.
intro, Spaceboy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJC Ever the Game Changer Network, and this broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2024 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. All right, tomorrow night, Bob Frissel is here. We're going to be talking about the ancient builder race. Until tomorrow night, I want you to be safe. Go Backley Tappy.